What's good, everybody? It's your man, Big Dom, coming live and at you with a True Players Podcast, episode number 29. Um, this is a big day today for all, all football football fans across the country. It's the, the uh, NFL Draft coming tonight for the first and second rounds, so at 8 o'clock p.m. tonight. Um, I'm excited about this because I want to talk about, you know, the um, my, my team, the New York Jets, as well as the New York Giants. Um, they, they have a big... Uh, big um, Choose the field today, but before I get into the uh, actual uh, potential drafts that these two two teams should make, I'm gonna go through go through um briefly about the trans the big transactions in the off season. Um, we're gonna start with the Giants here, in which they traded Odell Beckham, um, Olivier Vernon, and um, they traded Olivier Vernon, Odell Beckham to the Browns for um Jabril's, Kevin Zider. And a, and a first round the pick, which is the seventeenth pick of the draft, as well as a third round pick. Um, let me tell you something about this trade right here. This trade came strictly from ownership. They got tired of um, Odell Beckham's bullshit, as far as you know, you know, just running his mouth a bit too much. They paid this man ninety million dollars to, to play football. And he spends his lot of time doing ESPN interviews and things like that. Don't get it, don't get it, don't get it twisted. He's a very player. I me personally, I wouldn't have traded him, but I understand where ownership came from. Their, their, their mindset is basically this, like like this. Listen, uh, we paid you ninety million dollars to shut up and play football. And I think the the final straw was um that ESPN interview that he did um with um Josina Anderson with Lil Wayne on the side. And um, he said some things about his quarterback. The one thing you don't do is talk about your quarterback. Uh, he said he doesn't know if, if he's to blame for his um, lack of production and things like that. That's not going to fly with the Giants, especially with the Maras, how they protect um, Eli Manning and all that stuff. That's not going to fly. And I pretty, pretty much, you know, that was the final straw. As well as two other games in which he actually um, left the game before halftime to get IV injections. I don't know why would anybody leave the um, leave the sideline for IV injections so early because IV injections can be given at any point. It's not that hard. So I guess they were fed up with his with his um, with his shit and send him send him along. Even though he it, it did come at a at a hefty price, uh, a twenty million dollar cap hit on the salary cap, which kind of stifles them from make signing any big time free agents. But um, their hope is that they they signed uh, um, and Antoine Bethea. Um, they also signed on Golden Tate to replace um, Odell Beckham. Listen, let me tell you something. Golden Tate is not Odell Beckham, but he's a, he is a receiver. Um, I just hope, um, you know, he, he he plays well with the Giants. Also, the Giants they fill in some holes um, with that trade. They get they get a good um, um, offensive guard, Kevin Zider from um, from the Cleveland Browns, and they also got the the, the first round seventeenth pick. You can't knock them for that. You know what I'm saying? They did a way better job than what um, Pittsburgh did with Antonio Brown, who was a far better receiver than Odell Beckham. The Steelers got a third, third and fifth round pick for um, Antonio Brown, who's right now the best receiver in the NFL. Come on. The Giants got a, 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 at least a first rounder. You mean tell me you couldn't get a first rounder from Oakland in which they had three first round picks for this year? Already, that's a big that's a big fall off from the Pittsburgh Steelers. But we're not we're not here to talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers. We're here to talk about the Giants. Um, so basically, I'm I'm going to see the, the Giants are going to be picking six. They're going to be picking seventeen in the first round. Um, they do need a quarterback. There's a lot of rumors. I, I was watching some ESPN this morning. There's a lot of rumors that they're possibly going to go um, pick a quarterback later later in the draft. Um, they're not gonna go with Haskins. Gonna go with the other quarterback from Duke, which I think is good. It's a big mistake. I would have, I would have definitely drafted um, Haskins, and I would definitely give the Jets a call to see if we could, if they could move up to get Haskins at three. It'll help both the Jets and the Giants if they make this trade amongst each other, because it'll, it'll fill in holes for both teams. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll help definitely help both teams if they make, if they make the draft pick with those picks once they swap, and um. The Giants still got work to do in the draft. I think they should need to focus on and defense. 
and possibly um, in the later round, probably try to find a big time receiver in the later rounds. But the thing about this draft is they're very deep with um, defensive players and pass rushes and linebackers. So the Giants can cannot. So, you know, let's see what happens when it comes to that. And um, now we're going to go to over to the Jets. We're going to go. Oh, it froze up. Sorry about that, guys. We kind of froze up. I hope we did, either you or the guys didn't miss what I was saying. But on the whole, like I said, the Giants should um, definitely look, look for the quarterback with the first first pick they have in the sixth pick, or even if they do trick a trade to trade out, get that quarterback. So I'm not a believer in the, in the Duke quarterback. I'm more of a believer of Dwayne Haskins and what he can provide for the Giants. A guy who could um, throw the ball from the pocket and also throw the ball deep to the receivers that he has. Still has. Still has. Remember, he still has Evan um, Evan Ingram and um, and Shepard still there and Golden Tate. So he has a decent receiving core. It's not like as it would be if, he, if they had Odell. And um, also start use the draft to build their offensive, rebuild their offensive line. Also. Um, rebuild their defense, especially with the pass rushing, um, linebackers, and I think they need a corner also. Maybe hopefully they get that through the draft. So we'll see what happens. I can't wait. I'm excited for tonight, even though I'll be at work. Um, even though I'm going to be at work, I'm going to definitely keep my eye on the draft. And I'll just go on to my team, the New York Jets, and um, with their big, their big, um, trend, the big transaction of Jets signing Le'Veon Bell. Um, if you look at my previous podcasts, um, I was kind of not with them signing Le'Veon Bell because of of the other uh, other distractions that he has. You know, this guy's come out with a rap album, and um, he's more concerned about his his rap career than he, than he is about his football career. I thought that was um, a little bit, you know, scary, and his focus should be on football. The Jets gave him, uh, I, I believe, thirty five million dollars guaranteed. He's getting paid 60 mil, but 35 is guaranteed, which I thought it was a steal for the Jets. I thought he was going to come up and ask for like 45 or 50 mil for the um, for the guarantees, but he came down this price and the Jets got him for a good price. The only thing I don't I don't agree with is um, for some reason I, I'm not comfortable with them cutting cutting Isaiah Correll or then Bilal Powell Bilal Powell go because I felt you know one of those one of those one of those running backs would have been a good great backup for um, Le'Veon Bell in case he gets injured. Because, you know, he, we all know he's good for an injury, or so, an injury or bump or, is, or sore during the season. So I believe um, it would have been a good um, opportunity to keep them signed. I don't think Ty Montgomery is going to fill the whole, fill the void that one of those could have filled as being a backup to, uh, to Le'Veon Bell. We still don't know if Ty Montgomery is a running back or a wide receiver. Um, so let's see what happens. Hopefully, Gates, Gates will have a role for him, and um, to to use his talents to the fullest. Um, the Jets will pick in um, number three. Um, they should go with. Uh, I think they should go with Quinton Allen. Either Quinton Allen or um, Quinton Allen or um, the defensive tackle. The uh, what's his name? I mean, hold on, guys. I lost my track. I have mine on my computer. Yeah, they should go with the um, defensive tackle. That that sort of defensive tackle. But if Bosa falls down to them, let's get up and get Bosa. Why not? Let's get that done. Um, get Bosa. You can finally get your pass rusher. First time you had a pass rusher since um John Abraham that could cause, cause that could change a game. Um, let's do that. But the Jets do trade down. You know. I, the best trade for the Jets is definitely trading with the Giants. I think if you just swap picks and possibly get a second round pick from the Giants, you know, the Jets can, will, will get the second round pick that they that they lost um, because of, of a previous trade. Previous trade. So, and the Jets holes, but the Jets need, still need to fill a hole at center. Um, they they re-signed Jonathan Harrison. He, he did a good job filling in for um, um, for long, but. You want to get much better than that. Like I said, if you hear my previous podcast, as I spoke about, uh, the Jets have been spoiled with great centers. They went from Kevin Mawai to Nick Mangold. 
seamless. Kevin Mawai left the team. Man Mango was drafted the year. The, the same year Mawai became a free agent. A seamless transition. And that's what I that I was that's what I was hoping to look for during um you know during another, another opportunity to fill in the hole with the center. So the Jets should need to look at center in the draft as well as cornerback. I, I don't want to see Claiborne again resign later on to um to be the cornerback of the Jets. It'll be open season on him. Open season on him. It's like they, they, the, the quarterbacks are waiting wait for him to get on that field so they can pick on him. I don't want to see Mo Claiborne. He's not a good um, cornerback. He's good for um, pass interference. He gets a lot of flags for pass interference. So does Tremaine Johnson. So I think if they can get draft a cornerback, that's a great, great cover corner, especially in man-to-man -man coverage. I mean, it'll, it'll help on Greg Williams' defense and um, and put this defense over the top to help Sam Donald in the offense as well. Um, the Jets also picked up Jameson Crowder. I don't know why they picked him up. Um, he's just, just another slot receiver. You can't have you can't have a number two receiver and two slot receivers as your main guys to throw the ball to. It just doesn't work. And I, and I, and I and I hate to say this, but what's going to happen is they're going to rely on Le'Veon Bell to to be the top receiver on the team. Le'Veon Bell is a, is a great running back, but let's not try to burn him burn him out on his first year of his contract. Let's not do that. You know. Let's not do that. You hear me ring the bell. Let's not do that. <laughs> but also, like I said, the Jets are in prime position. Um, I would definitely later in the draft. I don't think it would be a, a concern early in the draft, but the Jets need to look at possibly drafting, drafting a receiver to help, you know, accommodate. Um, try to hope, hope and pray that you end up with a, with a, um, a goal mine in the later rounds as the number one receiver. Um, the Jets still have, you know, still have opportunities to, to, to build the team properly. And um, so let me see. They picked up Kelechi Osabelli from the uh, Raiders. He gave a fifth round pick for him. He had a down year the year before, but he, I guarantee you, this guy, the way he's, the way he's talking, um, he may have a, a, a rebound season with the New York Jets and, and, and play really good. Also, a big-time pickup, C.J. Mosley, inside linebacker from the Baltimore Ravens. That was a big pickup. For me, it spells the end of um, Darren Lee. Um, he's been, you know, he's been an okay linebacker, but a knucklehead at times. At, you know, getting to that fight with that girl, which which um, Leonard Williams had to pull him away, and um, also getting PEDs on um performance enhancing drugs for the last four games of the season. Um, he's going to get either cut or traded. Now let's try to trade with get another draft pick or something. I mean, he's worth something, if you ask me. So that's what I would do if I was the Jets. I'm kind of excited for the draft. I can't, like I said, I tell, like I told you guys, like I'm, I'm excited about the draft. I uh, can't wait to see what my, what my team, the Jets, are going to do and see what the Giants are going to do with the draft. And... I'm going to cut this podcast a little bit short, you know. I hope you guys listened to the previous podcast with my uh, recap of Game of Thrones episode number two, season eight. And um, definitely, I will definitely, um, after the draft is over, because remember, round one and two is tonight. And I believe round three and four are on Friday. And Saturday, we'll finish off the draft completely with the fifth, and, fifth, sixth, and seventh round um, draft on Saturday. So I will definitely uh, come back with a recap uh, of the draft, as well as the recap of episode number three of Game of Thrones, and I went to fell. Can't wait to give you guys those two episodes. Uh, my podcast, you can listen to my podcast on iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and TuneIn Radio. Definitely. If you have any questions, definitely hit up hit me up on my email, trueplayerspodcast at gmail.com, T-R-U-P-L-A-Y-A-Z, podcast at um, gmail.com. And also like my page on Facebook, same spelling, to search for the page on, on Facebook. Once again, Dom Shiman, Big Dom, signing off on the um, True Players Podcast, NFL Draft Preview. Um, I'll holler at you guys another time. Peace.